Hi there, this is Ryan Malloy here at the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In this video, we are going to discuss how to determine the points of inflection in a polynomial equation. So what is a point of inflection? In an abstract sense, you can consider it to be the point at which the concavity of the graph of a function changes from concave up to concave down, or vice versa. But what that means in terms of derivatives, it is a point at which the second derivative of a function changes sign, either from positive to negative or from negative to positive. So let's walk through an example. Here we have a nasty looking polynomial, f of x is equal to x to the fifth over five minus two thirds x to the fourth plus two thirds x to the third. And since finding the point of inflection requires knowledge of the second derivative, let's go ahead and find that. First we'll take the first derivative. Let's see here, 5 times 5, we get x to the 4th minus 8 thirds x to the 3rd plus 2x squared. Okay, let's go ahead and take the second derivative. So we get 4x cubed minus 8x squared plus 4x. And what we want to know is when does this function change sign? Well, it would be helpful if we could factor it, and in fact we can. You notice that we can pull a 4x out of each of these terms. So let's go ahead and do that. It's equal to 4x times x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, and it just so happens that this polynomial can be factored as well. It's 4x times x minus 1 times x minus 1, or x minus 1 squared, however you prefer to write it. Okay, so with this information, it is fairly simple to determine where f double prime of x changes sign. Since it must be at a zero, we can simply take each of these factors and set them equal to zero. And you can quickly find that our candidate points are x equals zero, since four times zero is zero, and x equals one. Since we plug in one, one minus one is zero, the whole thing goes to zero. Okay, but it's not enough to know that the second derivative is zero at a point. We need to make sure that it actually changes sign. And since at the point x equals one, we actually have two zeros, this will not change sign at x equals one. And you can test it if you plug in x equals one half and x equals two, for example, and you'll find that they both have the same sign. But if you t do the same sort of test for x equals zero, you'll find that it does change sign. So our only inflection point is at x equals zero. And if you want to, you can plug in x equals zero into our original equation to determine the point at which we have an inflection point rather than just the value. And of course we find that f of zero in this case is just zero. So the only inflection point we have for our function is at zero, zero, the origin. And that's all there is to it. My name is Ryan Malloy and we've just discussed how to determine the points of inflection of a polynomial equation.